Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms, and here we are with another antenna video. And today we're going to talk a little bit about some modifications you can make to the ZS6 BKW to make it work better. Now, about 10 11 months ago, I did a video on the ZS6 BKW and I did a build, and it's a very inexpensive antenna to build, and it's a good antenna. I mean, don't get me wrong, but it's not perfect. Uh, it's no bueno at 30 and 60 meters and 15 meters, doesn't work well either. Uh, other than that, it does work pretty well. Now, what we're going to address today is a lackluster performance at 80 meters. Now, there is an article by a gentleman named Cecil Moore, W5DXP, that is on the internet, and I will go ahead and put a link to that particular article in the description for this video so you can review it yourself. And basically, he made several modifications to the ZS6 BKW to allow it to work as an all-band antenna. Now, a lot of the stuff he did was vary the lengths of ladder line, and he used a, a series of capacitors and relays in order to uh, facilitate this various band switching scheme. And I wasn't interested in doing something like that, but I did want it to work better on, again, the 80 meter band. Now, the way he addressed this particular problem at 80 meters was by placing a doorknob capacitor in series with the feed line before you get to the ballon. I don't use the ballon in my particular ZS6 BKW. I don't find it to be particularly useful. You know, your mileage may vary. Build your antenna the way you want to build it. Let's look at what we're talking about here. This is an antenna sweep of this antenna as it sets right now. And basically, my band of interest when I first constructed this antenna was the 40 meter band. And you can see it's pretty good there. But the 80 meter band, you can see that although that dip looks like it's just outside of the 80 meter band, by the time it's crossing over, when it gets into the voice portions of the 80 meter band, that it's almost off the scale. Well, now that we're zoomed in here, you can see what we're talking about. You can see that we're somewhat south of our desired target. Now, you would be correct in saying, well, Brett, you just need to trim your antenna and you can move that point north and be in the desired range you wish to cover within the 80 meter band. However, due to the harmonic relationship of this antenna, now I'm going to be shifting my 40 meter point even further up and out of range and then my 20 meter point 17 meter and so on and so forth and then that's going to necessitate the addition of some other reactive component in order to try to counteract that so what we're going to do is, is we're going to add some capacitance as was recommended in that document here's an overview of what we're doing here's our 450 ohm window line and this runs up to our element split off and i've eliminated the one-to-one -one ballon on my ZS6 BKW. Uh, when I had the other one go bad and I did a video on that, I deleted it entirely and I've got one of these small PVC caps that does an SO239 to a balanced feeder and that's pretty much just shown here that it's sealed in epoxy at the base of it. And down here is our unbalanced feed line, our LMR 450M feed line. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to place a 500 picofarad high voltage doorknob capacitor in series with the center conductor and do it before our interface between the 450 ohm feed line and our SO239 here. Now if you had a ballon, you could do the same thing with your one-to-one -one ballon right here and just place the capacitor in the same spot. Let me talk about how we're going to build this enclosure here and make it robust enough. So this is what we're going to use for our enclosure here, and this is nothing more than a legacy 8900 megahertz impulse suppressor from Polyphaser. These things can be had for five to ten dollars a piece on eBay, and they make excellent enclosures for these kind of projects. They've got RF connectors on there already. If you wanted to use in connectors, I'm going to go ahead and swap those out for SO239s because that's how I have my cable and my antenna connectorized and I don't want to run a bunch of adapters that I don't have to run. Let me go ahead and open it up for you to give you an idea of what we're working with here. See our lid comes off. It's retained with machine screws. And here is the inside of our impulse suppressor here and we're going to be able to repurpose uh, these conductors here for this micro strip for our installation of our 500 picofarad 30 kilovolt doorknob capacitor. So let's go ahead and remove our screws from our existing RF connectors here. 
You can see once we've removed our screws, it's pretty easy just to go ahead and remove our RF connectors and this conductor out of here. This one here is going to be a little more complicated. We're going to end up having to unsolder this inductor from this RF connector here. So what I've done is I've tightened the hardware back up here and I used a couple of 440 lock nuts to take that nylon piece out of here that basically allowed us to have that micro strip inside of here. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to go ahead and put down some servo tape. Just like that. So now you can see what we've done here. We've got our conductors that will tie into our center conductor and it's in series with our doorknob capacitor here. So we'll go ahead and put our SO239s in on either side, trim these up to fit, and then we can go ahead and solder our RF connectors in place. Well, we got our project, the physical part of it done. We've got our capacitor installed in series, got our RF connectors tightened up on either end. And all we gotta do now is put the lid on the back side of it here, secure it up, and then take it outside and test it. And right here is where we're gonna install it between here and this PVC breakout here. And you can see I did end up having to use an adapter, of course. If anybody knows where I can get a male PL259 that is a panel mount such as this right here to eliminate the need for this, please let me know. And here it is installed. Let's see how it works. And like paternity court, the results are in. This represents our sweep of our antenna system after the capacitor was installed and we're comparing it to where we were at before. The lines in purple represent where we were at before, the lines in red represent where we're at now. And goody goody gumdrops, it looks like it worked out just like we thought it would. What we're going to do is we're going to zoom in on each band that the antenna is efficient at and look at the changes. And here are our changes on 80 meters and it looks like we've shifted the point up by 300 kilohertz, which is good news. And here's our results at 40 meters, and it looks like it came up 200 kilohertz. Again, not perfect, but something that should be anticipated. And at 20 meters, it looks like we came up 100 kilohertz, and the results on 20 meters, that's not really that bad. That's actually a pretty good spot to be in. 17 meters, we came up 60 kilohertz, and the results are positive as shown here. At 12 meters, we came up a tad, but no profound change here. And finally, 10 meters, we've had a little bit of change here, but uh, again, like 12 meters, no real profound change. Let's do a little experiment. This is a signal that's being received by the ZS6 BKW at 3.8 megahertz, and this is without the capacitor. And the received signal strength is minus 79.9 decibel milliwatts. Now let's go put the cap in line and see what our change is like. Now this is our signal that we're receiving with the capacitor inserted. And the signal we're receiving now is minus 76.3 decibel milliwatts. So what we're seeing with inserting the capacitor in line is a gain of 3.6 dB. We saw a net gain of around 3.5 dB at the 80 meter band, and that is good, and it's due to the effect of the reactive component added, shifting our point of resonance up in frequency and reducing the mismatch substantially. However, we also saw a reduction in SWR from 3 to 1 to 2 to 1 between the two different resonant points, and this indicates to me that we are seeing some insertion loss. In the 80 meter band, 
we were still exhibiting a gain in spite of this loss, but what about the other bands the antenna is operating on? We really owe it to ourselves to sweep the device and see if leaving it in line when operating on bands other than 80 meters will hurt us or if its effect is going to be negligible. Here's a sweep of our device and as anticipated we are experiencing insertion loss. In the 80 meter band we're looking at 2.54 dB of loss across the device. At 40 meters we're looking at 9 tenths of a dB. 20 meters, a quarter of a dB, and the 10 meter band, 7 hundredths of a dB of loss. Now I'm sure we might wonder why we would bother with adding a capacitor if we could just as easily add an antenna tuner. First of all, most antenna tuners are located either internal to the transceiver or connected to the tuner input by a jumper to the transceiver with the antenna feed line connected to the output port of the tuner and then exiting the shack. Coaxial cable is lossy under high SWR, and since we have a 16 to 1 SWR at 3.8 MHz in example A, our coax feeder is going to exhibit mismatch loss in addition to its own inherent loss due to RF attenuation. For example, if we feed our antenna under test with 50 foot of RG8X without the capacitor, our cable loss would be just under 3 tenths of a dB along with a mismatch loss of 1.5 dB. So we're looking at a total loss of 1.8 dB under power regardless of tuner intervention. Now it is true that the addition of the capacitor at the frequency of interest is adding 2.5 dB of insertion loss. However, it is reducing our SWR feed line mismatch loss to 6 hundredths of a dB. And in our model here, here model B, our tuner will be working much more efficiently and not working nearly as hard trying to match the load. Let's perform an experiment and see how this works out. Now this is using our antenna tuner on the 80 meter band and our received signal is minus 81.4 decibel milliwatts. And here are results with running the device and the antenna tuner on our system and the received signal is minus 80.9 decibel milliwatts. Now one thing for sure is, is it was much easier to achieve a match with the manual antenna tuner with the device in line than it was leaving it out of line. That was interesting. So despite the math, we saw a net gain of half a dB in spite of the loss in our capacitor. You know, why is that? Tuners are not lossless, and the loss in a tuner is typically proportionate to the mismatch the tuner is trying to match. The tuner I use for this test is my Dentron Monitor Junior, you see here, and perhaps one of the dozen or so other tuners I have here would exhibit less loss, but this isn't a tuner video. I can speak from experience, however, that the internal tuner on my IC756 Pro 3 works hard to match this test antenna without the capacitor, but with the capacitor, it's immediate and the measured match presented is flat instead of 1.5 to 1. I will add that the most efficient tuner configuration you can use is shown up here in example C. That is where the tuner is placed remotely at the feed point. But again, this isn't a tuner video and we need to move forward and address the elephant in the room. How would the capacitor left in line affect the 40 meter band besides changing the resonant point? We saw that there is almost a dB of insertion loss at 40 meters. We will use the frequency of 7150 kilohertz as it was where the streams crossed in our SWR sweep. So let's perform an experiment. Here is our test signal received with the capacitor removed, minus 74 decibel milliwatts. And this is our signal with the capacitor installed, minus 73.7 decibel milliwatts. So we did not see a disadvantage to leaving our capacitor in line at 40 meters. In fact, we saw a slight gain of 3 tenths of a dB, surprisingly. And spoiler alert on the other bands the ZS6 BKW is efficient at, I did not see a disadvantage either outside of a diminishing shift in frequency effect as we saw, or as we step up in bands, as you saw in the initial sweeps. So in conclusion, the work put forth by Mr. Moore in this case provided the effect he said it would. And furthermore, this demonstrates that although a tuner will allow your transmitter to be happy, the benefit of just having a reactive component in the antenna system provided a 3.5 dB gain in performance at the desired frequency without the use of a tuner, 
in spite of the device displaying insertion loss. This device also provided a gain of a half of a dB in conjunction with a tuner when compared to a tuner only solution. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.